Hey, Teresa. Have you finally found a place to live yet? <laughs> or are you still mooching off mom and dad? I'm only asking because I'm planning to bring Philip to meet mom and dad next week. I was really hoping you'd be out when we came so there wouldn't be any awkwardness. How come you haven't found a place yet? Mom and dad are getting really uncomfortable with you still being there. Ugh, I know, I know. I'm gonna leave as soon as I can, but it's not that easy. And I'm still having trouble wrapping my head around everything that's happened. Now, what do you mean? Wrapping your head around what? Um, to start with, how about that you, my own baby sister, stole my fiancé from me? Or how about all the horrible things you accused me of doing to make me out to be the villain and justify what you did? I'm just still in shock over everything. No, oh, please, get over it already. You're getting treated like a villain because you are the villain here. Only someone who knows that they've done something wrong complains about being called out on it. That makes no sense at all, Abriel. What are you even talking about? I make perfect sense. I didn't force Philip to fall in love with me. It just happened. What was I supposed to do? You're so mean to him and nagging all the time about responsibility and other boring things. It's no wonder he didn't really want to marry you. Of course it's all your fault. You may have everyone else fooled, but of all people, you can't fool me. You threw yourself down the stairs and then told everyone that I pushed you even though I was nowhere near you at the time. All I did was tell the truth. I sprained my ankle really bad in that fall. It's pretty heartless of you not to care at all. Of course I care, but it was your own carelessness that made you fall. And then you took advantage of the fact that there was no one around to see to blame it on me. I don't understand how mom and dad can believe such an obvious lie. And somehow you were able to use it to paint me as this horrible person and steal Philip from me too. I did not. Philip was already mine by then. He loves me. So of course he was on my side. Is there anything else you need me to explain to you? It seems like you don't have anyone left to be on your side. It would be best if you just disappeared now, okay? No, oh, believe me, I understand that. Not one person is willing to see you for who you really are. You know what? I'm done with this. I've been dragging my feet on moving because I was hoping someone would wake up and realize what's going on. But I guess that's not going to happen. I'll be out of the house today. I can't handle being around any of you anymore. Finally! You've made it perfectly clear. There is not one person that I can rely on in my own family. No one can see the truth even when it's right in front of them. Ugh, excuse me? That's awfully rude of you. You pushed me down the stairs. They are only treating you as you deserve. You can say whatever you want at this point. I'll soon be gone, so nothing you say matters to me anymore. Feel free to say anything your crazy mind comes up with. I'm packing my stuff up now, so leave me alone. Hey, are you finally gone yet? I made an appointment with an apartment manager to view an apartment. Okay, good. You should be out really soon then. It won't take you long to pack, right? It's not like you have anything of value to pack. <laughs> I have already packed up everything I need to take with me. Thanks to someone sneaking into my room and stealing a bunch of my stuff. What? I did not. I didn't steal anything. I only took what you said I could have. It's your fault for buying clothes and stuff that don't look good on you. I'm way prettier than you, so it makes sense that I take it all off your hands. I said someone stole from me. I never accused you of anything. Oh, thank you for the confirmation though. I doubt it'll change anything, but at least I have proof of your theft. Oh my god! Ugh, you are so annoying! Just get out already! Mm-hmm, I'm leaving now. Good. I'm so glad I don't have to deal with you anymore. Finally, nothing is in my way! Oh, one more thing, Abriel. Philip has blocked my number, so I need you to deliver a message for me. What? If he doesn't return the $3,000 that he borrowed from me by the end of the month, I'll take him to court over it. What? <laughs> what $3,000? Oh, he knows how to get the money to me already, so if you could just give him that message, that would be great. Thanks. If he has any questions, he can send them through you or unblock me and ask for himself. That's ridiculous. Why would he borrow money from you? He works at a major company and makes good money. You barely make enough to live on. There's no way this is true. You're making stuff up because you don't want to let him go. <laughs> I'm not and I can prove it. I have a written promise from him to pay it back. <sighs> yeah, yeah, whatever. You don't have anything. <laughs> Look, I honestly don't care whether you believe me or not. Just give him the message, okay? 
I'm sure he'll tell you why he borrowed money from me if you ask him. <laughs> I'm not telling him anything. Just stop. This isn't a funny joke. It just makes you look desperate and pathetic. <laughs> Whatever. It's up to you. I'm leaving now. I really hope I never have to return to this place again. Goodbye, Abriel. Teresa, guess what? I have some amazing news. Philip asked me to marry him. <laughs> it's okay to reply. You don't have to ignore me. It was so romantic. He proposed while we were walking together on the beach. The sun was going down and oh, it was just so perfect. It was the sweetest thing ever. Oh, congratulations. Oh, we've already started talking about the wedding. We're planning on a budget of around $50,000? Maybe a bit more, when all is said and done. Really? I wouldn't get your hopes up on that. That's a lot of money. Oh, please, you are just jealous. No, I just know that he doesn't have the kind of money and neither does our family. Oh, come on, don't be like that. Stop being such a downer. I know what your negative attitude is really about. Who cares that he has to borrow some money from you before? That's over now and his financial situation is very different than it was then. Besides, he told me he paid you back a few days after I gave him your message. Oh, did he? Well, I appreciate that you passed along the message. He told me that he only had to borrow from you in the first place because a few unexpected expenses came up. It's pretty cruel of you to hold it over him like you did. It just reveals how self-righteous you really are when you do things like that. That's not what happened at all. Look, Abriel, all I want is a clean break between me and the two of you, and I almost had that. I don't understand why you felt the need to come bragging to me about how happy the two of you are. You've won. Just leave me alone. Oh, well, excuse me for assuming you'd want some time to prepare yourself for the wedding. I guess you'd prefer to just get blindsided by the wedding invitation? <laughs> are you serious right now? After all that's happened, I thought I would be the last person you'd want to invite to your wedding. Of course I want you there. We are a family. I wasn't trying to brag about anything. I just wanted to share the news with my big sister. I didn't want there to be any drama if you found out from someone else, so I thought I'd tell you myself. I wouldn't have started any drama regardless of how I found out. I told you. I just want to move on and heal from all of this. Okay, fine. Be that way. Did you need anything else? Well, no, I, I guess not. I have to get back to work. <laughs> oh my god, really? It's Saturday. Why are you working? Are you so poor that you had to get a side gig or something? No wonder you demanded that Philip give you the money. I changed careers and entered the hospitality industry. Weekends are just another day for me now. Oh, I didn't know you changed careers. Mm-hmm. Thanks to you, I'm actually making pretty good money now. The pay here is higher than where I was working before, and I don't have to pay anything to our parents or help Philip out anymore. <laughs> what do you mean, thanks to me? Isn't it obvious? If you hadn't betrayed me, I wouldn't be where I am now. I don't think there's anything else to do or say at this point. Bye. Ah, uh, Theresa, answer your phone. I need you. Jesus, what do you want? I can't really talk, I'm at work right now. Are you ready to congratulate me? To <laughs> congratulate you? For what? Is your wedding coming soon? I already congratulated you for that. Yes, it's next Sunday. You did congratulate me when I told you that Philip proposed, but I wanted to talk to you about your wedding gift to us. We're sisters, so $50,000 would be the right amount to give us, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry, what now? Are you seriously asking me to give you $50,000? Have you lost your mind? Well, you're my big sister. You should want to help me in any way you can. You can't put a price tag on how much sisters mean to each other. <laughs> wow. I don't even know where to begin with all of that, but I think I know what's going on here. You finally realize the financial situation that you're in, didn't you? You can't pay the costs for the big, expensive wedding you want, so you expect someone else to hand over the cash. No, it's not that. You're broke. Just admit it. That's not true. I, I have a little money. No, you refuse to work anything other than a part-time job, so you don't make very much. And what you do make, you like to spend on useless stuff and going out rather than even trying to save. On top of that, mom and dad are probably still giving you spending money whenever you ask. Even though they really aren't in a position to do that. 
so you haven't had any reason to ever try and save any money whatsoever, have you? And sure, Philip works for a big company, so you probably thought you could rely on him for some money. But he's only on a temporary contract. That won't last forever. Ugh, oh, how do you know that? Because I was engaged to him first. There's nothing about him that I don't already know. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you just found out that temporary employees make a lot less than full employees. That's why you're suddenly scrambling for money days before your wedding. The reason he had to borrow money from me was that he got laid off from a temporary job when the company downsized. He needed help just making ends meet until he got his next temp job assignment. I didn't expect him to be able to pay me back all at once like he did after I told you about the debt. I wonder where he borrowed the money from to make that happen. He said he had the money and he'd just forgotten to pay you back until I said something. Sure he did. Anyways, back to all this about giving you money to pay for your wedding. You went into this assuming that he was going to pay for everything. But he was under the impression that our parents would pay for it since they make a point of appearing to have money even though they don't really. That's about how it went, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's not my fault. I didn't know that Philip was only a temp. I thought he had a really good salary as a full-time employee, so I never doubted that he would be able to take care of it. You are more to blame than I am. Why didn't you tell me if you knew he wasn't making that much? I had no idea. I feel so... <laughs> lied to. I told you about it when I was engaged to him. And you and I have some friends in common, so I'm sure they mentioned it at some point. No one tried to hide it from you. You just didn't want to hear about it because it was inconvenient. I know I mentioned it to mom and dad, and I'm pretty sure you were there too. I told you guys about how we decided not to get married until he was offered a full-time position. But I guess you weren't listening because you were already making plans to stab me in the back. Ugh! You still should have told me! It doesn't matter that he chose me over you. How could you just let me think he had a high-paying job when that's not the case? That's basically the same as robbing me. I didn't know I was with someone so poor that he couldn't even afford a proper wedding. You're a grown woman. Do you really need your big sister to treat you like a child and tell you every little thing? Neither me nor Philip ever made his job status a secret. If you really didn't know, it's because you weren't paying attention. But you're really going to try and blame me. Why are you being so mean? If the two of you didn't have a conversation about this before now, that's a problem for the two of you. Not me. Not mom and dad. No one. Just you. And you're the one that stole him from me in the first place. Anything having to do with Philip became your problem when you did that. At that point, his problems were no longer any of my responsibility. Uh, that doesn't change anything! And on top of that, you accused me of pushing you down the stairs and made me out to be a criminal. I was forced to move out because of you. There's no point in trying to point the finger at me. This is 100% your own fault. No, it isn't! You are to blame too! <laughs> in case it wasn't clear enough? I will not be giving you any money. Not for your wedding or any other reason. No, Teresa, please. I'm your sister. You should want to help me out. Even if I wanted to, I don't have that kind of money to throw around. Please, I'll do anything. If we can't pay for it by Sunday, the wedding will have to be canceled. We've already invited so many people, and it would be so embarrassing to have to cancel at the last minute. Besides, I don't even have enough money for the cancellation fee if it came to that. We have nothing. Please help me just this once. You never have to hear from me again if you don't want to. If you help me, I'll be a better sister. I promise. I'll be there for you always. Oh, please, Teresa. After our last conversation, Abriel continued to call and message me even enlisting our parents and Philip to do the same. Abriel argued that I shouldn't hold a grudge against her and should help her with the wedding expenses. Philip even suggested that we get back together, but in the same conversation, he had the audacity to ask me for money. My parents asked me to come back home, but they also asked for money, so I don't believe their intentions were sincere. Since switching to working in the hospitality industry, I've been making more money. However, it still wasn't enough to give Abriel what she demanded, even if I wanted to. I ended up changing my phone number because they refused to stop harassing me for money. A friend of mine who's still friends with Philip told me that he was cut off from his family when they found out what happened. They didn't like the idea of him trying to squeeze money out of someone through marriage. In the end, I'm glad that I didn't end up marrying him and being forced to rely on him for the rest of my life. 
I heard that they were only able to pay for half of the cancellation fee for the wedding. My parents ended up having to sell their house for almost nothing because they couldn't keep up with it anymore. My parents and sister moved into an apartment together, but they fight almost every day. The neighbors are constantly complaining about them, so there's a chance they'll be forced to move again. <sighs> Good riddance.